Hello everyone. Um, so, uh, I got some feedback and a uh, listener kindly suggested to me uh, that rather than uh, going right into reading my uh, novel excerpt uh, at the beginning of the podcast, uh, that rather I just give a small little introduction. So, um, uh, yes, here's my introduction. <laughs> I'm gonna, I will read, uh, an excerpt from a memoir. Uh, the memoir is called, uh, My Father, the Pornographer by Chris Offit. And, uh, here I go. The kitchen had an electric stove with an array of buttons for controlling heat. Extra low, low, medium, medium high, extra high. Pressing one button automatically popped free the others. The newfangled space age system fascinated me, and I discerned a relationship between the letters on the buttons and the intensity of heat. My mother explained the alphabet. At age five, I taught myself to read other kitchen items. Sugar, flour, salt, jiff, craft, Velveeta, Frigidaire, and Osterizer. During the 1930s, the Works Progress Administration built my elementary school from huge blocks of sandstone transported by rail from a nearby bluestone quarry. As with all structures in Appalachia, geography dictated location. This sc the school sat in a wide holler flanked by steep hills. Our playground was a half acre of rock and dirt with no basketball hoop. Monkey bars or swing set. Our only rules were to stay out of the creek and the road. We began each day by pledging allegiance to the flag, then reciting the Lord's Prayer. For the next ten minutes we stood by our desks and sang patriotic songs and hymns. I took everything literally, and was a serious, though naive, thinker. We often sang the spiritual, He's got the whole world in his hands. I believed this was actual truth, that God was a giant big enough to hold the earth in his palm. The darkness of night was a result of God putting the world in his pants pocket. Stars perplexed me. They appeared to be holes in the fabric of God's pants, allowing the entrance of light. I believed God's clothing would be, a better, would be better than mine. My mother washed our family's clothes once a week, and it made sense that God's mom did too. Therefore, I concluded, stars were evidence of a tissue in God's pocket that went through the wash. He was all-powerful and all-knowing, but his mother wasn't. It was she who forgot to remove the tissue from God's pants. I applied a similar logic to the existence of a water fountain at school. At age six, I'd never seen one before. A classmate explained to the schoolhouse that the schoolhouse had a big well under it to supply the water. His thick accent stretched the word well to sound like whale. My understanding was that living in the earth beneath the school was a whale the size of one that swallowed Jonah. When its blowhole spewed, pipes captured the water and ran to the drinking fountain. One day during lunch break, I tried to crawl under the school and look for the whale. The principal caught me, and I dutifully explained my mission. He was amused, telling me I had a big imagination for such a little fellow. A few years later, I understood why my classmate had been so excited by plumbing. His family had no water at their house. One of his chores was to draw water from a well and haul it home. After school, I walked a creek, then climbed a dirt road to a shortcut path through the heavy woods. For the first few years, I rushed home. Mom met me at the back door with a hug and a snack. My brother and sisters were overjoyed by my return, as if they feared I was gone for good. My memory of fourth grade is very strong, perhaps because I began writing and drawing in earnest then. From that year, I had four short stories and two essays. It was also the first year I began keeping a daily journal, small, with a psychedelic design on the cover appropriate to the year 1968. Possibly the act of documenting my perceptions enabled my 
my my memory to retain greater clarity. Maybe my interest in the world increased, or my senses reached a new plateau, or the compulsion to observe was born. In any case, it was the earliest period from which I can remember long sections of my life, as if the act of recollection itself had become a narrative. On the first day of fourth grade, the teacher distributed textbooks to use throughout the year. I read them all in the week and spent the next nine months reading books, drawing pictures, and writing stories. Teachers often reprimanded me for disturbing my neighbors, which seemed an odd term, something people on the hill did with rifles and dogs. The school lacked specialized instructions for children with developmental disabilities. The principal put them in the classroom there that was appropriate to their level. The term used for them was retarded and included autism, Down syndrome, products of incest, and poor prenatal diet. In fourth grade, we had such a boy named Carson who had been held back so often, he was gripped by advanced puberty. Bigger and stronger than the rest of us, he spoke in a series of unintelligible lisping grunts. He couldn't read or write. Due to his impulsive behavior, Carson's desk sat at a corner in the front of the classroom. No one dared touch it. A favorite prank was to trip someone, forcing the victim to grab Carson's desk for support, therefore, thereby receiving a quick transmission of cooties. Carson seldom attended school. When frustrated, angry, or merely irritated, teachers beat students with wooden paddles. Strangely, our fourth grade teacher didn't believe in hitting children. Her punishments included staying in the classroom during lunch recess or sitting in Carson's seat for half an hour. One day I made three paper airplanes, each smaller than the other, and lodged them within the crease that formed the fuselage of a largest craft. My idea was to send them aloft together and recreate the three stages of a rocket launch. Instead, I was caught by the teacher at the very moment of throwing the planes. She banished me to Carson's desk for the rest of the year. I placed the textbook on the seat as a sanitizing device, fearful that some aspect of Carson would be contagious. I sat with a rigid posture. The desktop held a, a patina of hieroglyphs, hieroglyphs excuse me, representing years of student boredom. Names and initials gouged into the wood, blackened by grime and pencil shellacked over, then cobwebbed again with another generation's imprint. By the end of the following day, I appreciated the benefits of my new situation. The desk, the desk sat beside the door, allowing me to, to be last in the room and first out. I faced the blackboard with my back to the class, providing a personal space and privacy that was absent at home. For the first time, I came to love school. During winter, icicles glittered on the cliffs. Low branches dumped snow on me as I walked to school. Warm weather finally arrived. Pink and white dogwoods dotted the hills. For for Thesia, for for Scythia, bushes bloomed bright yellow. Carson came to school. The teacher ordered me back to my original spot. I locked my ankles around the wooden legs of Carson's desk, gripped the seat, and reminded her that she ordered me to sit there until the end of the year. Exasperated by my defiance, she sent Carson to my seat. Within half an hour, someone provoked him into an unruly act. The teacher made him stand. She pushed my former desk to the other corner in the front of the room and told Carson to sit there. Our class finished the spring semester with the smartest kid and the dumbest kid sitting in opposite corners, yin and yang, each of us in the other's seats. Combined, we made a single average student. It would be easy to criticize the teacher's method of discipline, but she was gentle with Carson, possibly the first person who was. Intimidated by his size, teachers often sent him to the principal's office for a paddling. He calmly lay prone on the floor, frustrating the principal, who believed it was a trick to avoid punishment. Many years later, Carson's cousin told me that he lived with his grandmother, who suffered from an unrepaired cleft palate, which rendered her articulations impossible to understand. Carson had copied her speech since birth. Before beating him, she made him lie on the floor because it was easier for her to hit him with it from a chair. After school, Carson chopped wood and hauled water instead of doing homework. He was shy and illiterate and never t learned to talk plainly. But there was nothing at all wrong with his mind. By age 10, I read a book a day, two if it rained. In summer, I waited for the bookmobile to trundle up the dirt road in first gear, driven by a young female volunteer. 
She wore a headband and patched bell-bottom trousers, her neck draped with beads. My intense feelings for her were unnameable. I couldn't look at her, could barely talk. I had a persistent fantasy of driving around the country with her, living in the bookmobile, and reading forever. One day the truck didn't arrive, and I never saw her again. So that was an excerpt of a memoir uh, but titled My Father the Pornographer by Chris Offit. So hello again. This is the third installment of the Insomniac's Graveyard Podcast hosted by me, Derek Thinks. You can call me Derek. Um, uh, as I mentioned... I was given feedback by a listener of, uh, of instead of coldly opening with just reading uh, the excerpt, uh, the book excerpt, that I uh, provide a brief introduction before I get right into it. Uh, so I, I greatly appreciate that from you, a kind listener. Uh, of course, for those who, um, who want to to provide comments, questions, feedback uh, to me, I, I will uh, I will pimp my social media at the uh, the conclusion or near the conclusion of this podcast. Uh, today, I am drinking a, a nice cold beer. You know, once in a while, I like to uh, engage in some. Uh, Sin, I guess, and drink an alcoholic beverage, or well, it depends on who you. I guess your background, whether or not you think it's a sin or not, or or, or bad or not. Of course, uh, drinking in moderation. Uh, seems okay, you know, just a, a beer or two, uh, every other night or just you know, three times a week, but of course, once you, uh, you know, exceed that amount. Uh, not only in number of beverages, but a number of days per week, then maybe it starts to become a bit of an issue. Uh, so, allow me to drink here. So, what I want to get into, first and foremost, which... Uh, for some reason, uh, uh, today or tonight, seem appropriate, is I want to uh, get into ways where um, one can allow themselves to have a fulfilling morning. First thing in the morning, after uh, getting up uh, from bed. Uh, you know, for for millions of people, millions of Americans, you know, uh, getting up out of bed is something that's dreaded on a daily basis. You know, something about the comfort and the confines of, of being in your blanket, especially in, in the colder months, the winter months and fall months, something about being in bed and, and waking up when it's... Uh, when it's dark, when it's still dark out, is troubling to some people, you know, of course, uh, um, especially if you're more of a night person rather than a morning person, you know, get, I can imagine getting up out of bed would be uh, torture. However, how can someone um, make the most out of getting up out of bed, maybe maybe a way to set the tone uh, for the morning. Um, I remember something that I used to do when I was younger, when I was a teenager, and, and just getting up out of bed just seemed like the worst thing ever. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd, uh, I'd briefly exercise. You know, some I, I'd do maybe... A minute or two of push-ups, just straight out of bed, straight out, straight out of bed. No matter how 
uh, tired I was, how painful it was, just how how little I actually wanted to do it. I would do a, mi a minute or two of push-ups, may maybe 100 push-ups or 50 push-ups, just some sort of physical exercise just to get the, the blood flowing. You know, and, and uh, I believe there's an added benefit to it if you start uh, if you wake up and the first thing you do is some sort of physical activity such as maybe running in place or doing uh, some, maybe some jumping jacks or, or push-ups in particular, in my case, um, you would, uh, it would prevent uh, unnecessary weight gain. Like this, I, I read somewhere, and, and you know, this, this, this may be completely false, but I read somewhere a long time ago that, it, that, that uh, uh, two minutes of... Uh, of moderate to uh, extreme physical exertion or exercise first thing in the morning after getting up can allow you to to prevent uh, up to 10 pounds of weight gain or maybe even more or well, let's just say 10 pounds of weight gain uh, per year so whether or not you believe that if you do believe that maybe 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 some physical activity would be a way to uh, to pep you up First thing, very first thing in the morning after getting out of bed, or maybe after getting out of bed and, and using the restroom, which is uh, something that uh, I assume a majority of people do, <laughs> the very first thing after getting up uh, from bed. Um, another thing is, is simply um, going, standing outside for a minute, you know, if, especially in the, uh, the, the winter months. Something about the cold can be jarring. Something about the cold can be freeing, even. You know, of course, um, for those who live in the city, I, I, I recommend that if, if you sleep in the nude, before you uh, get up out of bed and stand outside for a minute and, and let the uh, absorb the cold, uh, you might want to put some pants on or something, or a shirt on or something. But once you're outside, you know, you don't really have to think about anything. Just let the cold, just absorb the cold and, 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 and feel alive while you're freezing there. <laughs> Maybe in some cases, literally freezing there for a minute, you know, and, and, and that, that'll, that'll wake you up. That'll, that'll wake you up and, and maybe even uh, clear your mind. Of course, the, um, the usual uh, technique of... Uh, a strong cup of coffee and a, a hearty breakfast is always um, is, is always a, a good thing. Um, you know, a, a nice strong cup of coffee if 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 that's if that's your thing, if that's your habit, or say if you're addicted to coffee, you know, maybe that's that's what what you need. You know, I I know there are mugs out there that are devoted to uh, 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 don't bother me until I've had my first cup of coffee. <laughs> so, so maybe that's that's something uh, that would uh, um, help you have a fulfilling uh, first or uh, fulfilling morning and prevent you from being uh, an irritable person, which uh, which I, I can be sometimes. Um, same thing with breakfast. You know, um, I be I believe uh, I've I've also read somewhere. Again, I, I I wish I could recall where I've I've read them, but but now they're kind of these kind of little tidbits of information that may or may not be true or are stored uh, in deep in my memory bank and and uh, the sources uh, escape me, but um. But I I heard that that a uh, uh, a good bit of protein in the morning, such as like eggs or bacon or ham or or, or if you're a if you're not a if you're not, if you don't eat meat, uh, you got, there are other sources of uh, of protein, but but say, let's just say for for the sake of this conversation that that you are a, a straight up omnivore, um, something like like a like couple eggs or 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 a, a protein first thing in the morning for breakfast, it it can uh, uh, uplift you throughout your day. You know, it it can uh, better your mood throughout throughout your day. Which, which that's something that I've uh, I've read somewhere maybe even a, a glass of milk in the morning or, or or something you know something something filled with protein you know in conjunct or in uh, along with 
um, you know, maybe doing those push-ups first thing in the morning, maybe you can gain a little bit of, a little bit of muscle mass just by, just, just by, you know, just having a little morning routine, you know, you may, you don't have to, you don't have to, uh, work out, work out hard, you know, or, or, or lift heavy weights, but, you know, maybe some push-ups and a, and a couple, couple eggs for breakfast and a glass of milk, maybe that can, uh, Maybe that can steer you in the right direction. If, if say you're uh, you, you're unsatisfied with uh, with uh, your uh, your strength, right? Um, yeah, or you know, uh, people. I I do know that that I do know, or I'm aware of people that that do start off first thing in the morning, waking up, getting up out of bed. They start with uh, uh, just uh, maybe five to ten minutes of prayer, or um, or uh, meditation, you know. If if you're the religious type, maybe maybe prayer is what uh what can get you. Or if you're or pursuing or or curious about being, uh, you know, spiritual, maybe something like meditation, you know, something that that'll clear your mind. Something similar to uh to uh standing outside in the cold for a minute, you know, something that'll maybe jar you awake or or will uplift you, make you feel, you know, better, uh, or more uh. Or um, more looking forward to your day, so that might be something that uh, uh, you could uh, take some interest in, you know. Um, you know. Uh, however, you know, it may say all that stuff doesn't work. Maybe, maybe, maybe you get up, great. You know, you did your push-ups, great. You had a, a nice cup of coffee, good breakfast. Maybe you stood outside in the cold for a minute, great. But maybe you still feel like you're kind of in your funk. Maybe you still feel like, maybe you, you still feel a little off. Maybe your mind is foggy. Maybe all those things, you know, maybe got you to the starting line. But for whatever reason, you hear the gun go off and you can't run. You know, you feel like your legs are still, are, you know, you still feel like your legs are uh, are cement blocks. You know, what, what would, what could get you out of a funk you know, uh, you know, just just an everyday little funk, right? Well, maybe let's get into that. You know, um, you know, something. Maybe, maybe you you need something to look forward to every day, every morning, every afternoon. You know, maybe you're 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 going to school, or you got that nine to five, and it's just the monotony. And just the how time ticks on so slowly, you know. Maybe, maybe, maybe just routine isn't necessarily for you. Well, you know, you could maybe something as simple as going out on a walk. You know, uh, of course, you know we're we're, all, we're talking we're talking mostly with with about the mind here, right? If you're in a funk, what should you do? You know, maybe you need to explore uh, your creativity. You know, maybe doodles, or maybe you need to get into a hobby such as uh, uh, painting or uh, or knitting. I mentioned knitting uh, in the previous podcast. You know, something something that allow you to let your creativity flow because the uh, uh, just the 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 mundane everyday tasks tasks of life. Uh, don't excite you, you know, maybe get you in a little bit of funk, of a funk, uh, you can also do something that, that I did, you know, uh, uh, the, pretty much, uh, n- you know, nearly every day this year, explore new music to listen to, you know, you know, I've, I've been listening to, um, the Beatles, which I, which I mentioned in, in, uh, in, uh, one of the previous podcasts, you know, which, which, uh, which kind of, um, Got me a little bit more into just like how how music evolved and and how how techniques of music, you know, still still remain t- today. You know, from from back then, from the sixties. You know, maybe maybe uh, flooding your mind with with new and ears with new music can help. You know, I've, I also I'm I'm listening to a to a, a, a hip hop music uh, from from this generation because I'm I'm from I'm from. Uh, you could say I'm from the a generation's past where where I'm I've only really gotten deep into uh, hip hop music of the uh, 
of the 90s and the uh, the aughts. But I'm, I'm starting to listen to more newer hip hop music. And it's kind of, I don't know, it, it's kind of putting me in a different mindset because it's, it's something that, that, uh, that's completely new and foreign to me. You know, um, you know, you could just simply uh, do an activity, you know, that, that, uh, do an activity that, that you, you've never thought about doing before, you know, such as maybe take up a, 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 a group thing or, or going to, going to a sporting event or something, maybe going to a sporting event is something that, that you can, you've considered, you know, or, 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 you know, can't afford, but of course, you know, going to, uh, uh, say, uh, high school basketball or local high school football game is, is something that's, that's, that's of low cost, especially if you're a, a student, maybe do something, uh, like that. Or, or if you, you know, I'm simply, you know, listing off like new and, and new things that, that you could do maybe to, to, to escape, uh, your funk, which, uh, which, um, you know, might, might be, uh, you know, it might, might help, might not help, you know, that, of course, that, that's, that's what this is about, you know, I'm, I'm here to, I'm here to, maybe if you're not feeling, uh, like you're, a hundred percent, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just here to, uh, um, give suggestions as to maybe a way that you can up your percentage by, you know, by one or by five, you know, and anything, anything helps, you know, maybe, uh, listening to podcasts, you know, maybe not just this one, but you know, there are really good podcasts out there, funny ones, serious ones, uh, true crime ones, ones about food or gaming or entertainment, you know, maybe something like that will, uh, will, uh, uh, kind of, you know, it, it'll, it'll rid your mind of the, uh, the crap, you know, for just, even if just for a moment. And, and maybe it'll allow for some self-reflection or, or maybe exercises of self-reflection, you know, um, of course, you know, sometimes for when, you know, maybe first thing in the morning or throughout the day, if you use the restroom, you pass by a, a, a mirror, which, and, you know, I, I know a lot of people there, you know, they look into the mirror and they're not quite satisfied or, or, or really into what they see. You know, it just, you know, something as simple as maybe changing your wardrobe. You know, you pass by a mirror and you notice that you have like a, that, 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 that nice little scarf or, or, uh, or that, that, that new uh, shirt that you bought, you know, during you know, a few days prior, you know, and you, you feel good in it. You look good in it. You know, may, maybe something as just like a change of clothes, maybe that can, that can, uh, uh change things up and, and get you, uh, a 5% better. And possibly out of your little, your little funk. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if you have uh, suggestions on how you, you know, you may get out of your funk, or or if you think that that uh, that my suggestions are are, you know, are are maybe some things that you you may try. You know, you can uh, you can um, hit me up on my social media. Uh, of course, uh, like I said, I will. Uh, I will uh, uh tell you where you can go to hit to to uh for comments and feedback near the conclusion of this podcast. <sighs> the, okay, so there there was one thing in particular that that I wanted to talk about. Um that uh that I I was a little hesitant in getting into getting into because I'm I'm not a person that's well uh, that's very knowledgeable, or very well versed. So, so if, well, of course, well, anything, anything that I say in the on this podcast, I'm I'm not an expert in anything. I have no no expertise in in much at all. So every, everything that you hear comes from a personal or a layman's uh, perspective. But I want to talk about a, a was it the the final frontier, space space exploration. Is that what they is that what they call it? the the you know, uh, you know the just extraterrestrial that or whatever right and I want to talk about I want to talk about space right so so I remember growing up and of course you know when you when you grow up a lot of people ask like or no when, when you're a child excuse me a lot of people ask uh, what you want to be when you grow up 
And, and, the, and the first thing that came to mind when I was like five or six years old was that I wanted to be an astronaut. You know, and an astronaut, of course, that's a, uh, you need to, of course, that, that is something, you know, given my, uh, my uh, abilities <laughs> and, and my, uh, my knowledge in, in uh, uh, math and science, is, you know, it's something that's, it's something that I, I would never, ever dream of doing uh, or being even close to doing now. But, you know, it's, it's still something that I remember, you know, being uh, an adult, that uh, the first thing I wanted to do when I was a kid was be an astronaut. You know, and of course I had like, I had like uh, these encyclopedias, you know, this, this is when, you know, when, this is when the, uh, the, the, the internet and ha owning a personal computer wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, viable for, for many people um, back then. But I had these encyclopedias and I would look up uh, space exploration and, and things like, you know, I'd look up uh, the space shuttle or like the, the lunar program, you know, that the United States, uh, uh, if you believe it, I, I guess you could, I, I, I should add, if you believe it, you know, the, the United States uh, uh, landed a manned aircraft on the moon in nine, back in 1969, you know, the, the space race, right? They were trying to, uh, they were trying to outdo the Soviets. It was, uh, it was like a big competition, you know, it was, it was like the, you know, the Cold War was going on and, and, um, and the, you know, the United States and, and the Soviet Union were like, it was like the battle of the illest, the battle of the superpowers. Who's going to send a man to space first? Oh, well, Russia did that. Okay. Or, or the Soviets did that. Okay. Who's going to land, uh, who's going to land a man on the moon first? Boom. U.S. Neil Armstrong. Wow. Plant that flag, right? You know. And then now, of course, after, um, uh, I believe uh, there have been multiple uh, manned missions in the moon between uh, 69 and 72. You know, then came uh, the space shuttle, right, to uh, to explore, uh, uh, you know, low Earth orbit, right? Uh, then, you know, of course, the, uh, there was the, uh, the, the, the tragedy, the Challenger tragedy in uh, 84, you know, and, uh, uh, I believe, uh, you know, they, we had the uh, the International Space Station. It was, was in the like what the the late nineties. That you know, and, and that that's like that that was like a, like a big deal because it was a collaborative effort between uh, the United States and Russia post Cold War, right? Um, you know, and and I remember a big deal when when I was growing up when I was when I was going to school. Uh, grade school was the Hubble telescope, you know, when, when, when they sent that up there and, and, and the Hubble, uh, the Hubble telescope was, was, um, was this amazing, you know, was this, this amazing contraption where, where it would, it was able to take, uh, pictures of, of space, you know, uh, in, with such quality that, that we'd, we'd never, we'd never imagine, you know, and, and of course now with not now you know I, I mean ever since the the 50s and 60s you know we we've uh, we've sent uh you know satellites and 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 uh, uh, uh you know um, spacecraft for research you know all over the solar system you know i, I believe i mean I, I still believe you know a good number of those even from the 60s and 70s maybe operational today i could be wrong you know but 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 of course with with the, with the technology back then you know that you know maybe communication isn't so great but uh you know then we then, then there there are other spacecraft and and and, and other uh research that that's discovering uh, other planets and other solar systems and and we're we're wondering oh well is is there a uh Earth-like planet. There's, you know, the 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 uh, Kepler, I believe, is 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 one that's that's far away that may be in a uh, has the potential of being in a habitable zone. You know. You know, and of course, it's like, well, you know, do you believe in extra extraterrestrial life? I mean, with the 
um, you know, millions of planets out there and billions of stars in the ever expanding universe, you know, I mean, you'd be a fool not to think that, that, uh, that there could be, uh, extra, extraterrestrial life, you know, how's it, how's it so perfect that, uh, that, uh, the earth is in the position that it's in with the sun in our solar system, in our Milky, in our galaxy, that, that only the earth is the, uh, has, a uh, intelligent life, you know, I mean, may, oh, well, if, I mean, you know, if, if you believe that there's, there's, a there's a extraterrestrial life, you might believe that there's also uh, such a thing that exists. I believe it's called simulation theory, right? Where, uh, where, I mean, you know, dumbing it down to layman's, to layman's explanation, because I don't know any other, re re really any other explanation of simulation theory. But, you know, there could be some, someone out there uh, who look just like you, or, or maybe a, an infinite amount of someone's out there who look just like you, who are sitting where you're sitting right now, either in your living room or at work or in your car, listening to this podcast that's being um, presented or recited by someone who looks exactly like me, or, or an infinite number of people who look exactly like me, who's talking right now about this very topic, sitting in their restroom while drinking a uh, cold beer, right? You know, you may, maybe it's something that you, that, uh, that could be possible that that could be in, in, in your, in your line of thinking, if you believe in extraterrestrial life. I do know that, uh, we have, yeah, we have, uh, maybe we've sent, you know, as recently as just the other day, we, we've sent maybe half a dozen or maybe more um uh, you know, uh robots to mars you know doing um which are are doing research on things like uh the 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 surface or the atmosphere or the core or searching for water or or vibration or or or, or whatever or signs of 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 life even you know that it's kind of crazy that that the planet mars which is slightly smaller than Earth, is completely inhabited by human-made uh, robots. You know, you have the you have the Curiosity rover who, who sings itself. It was, I believe it's the Curiosity rover who sings itself Happy Birthday every every year, which is kind of sad. <laughs> you know, but but it you know it, and then you have you know people from NASA from Earth that, that that are controlling these things and and it's constantly sending feedback, constantly sending information that maybe, you know I know that the uh, that the the Russian space program, uh, I believe they they want they want to try to send a manned mission to Mars by the year twenty forty. So that's you know that's that's the twenty twenty some odd years from now. Um, and I I would imagine that the United States would have this as have, have this similar ambition, maybe send a manned mission, uh you know, to uh to to Mars to the red planet to explore, but uh, you know within the next maybe twenty twenty five years you know and and I think that'd be cool I think that'd be great especially since we sent a man or multiple men to the moon in nineteen sixty nine you know which was forever ago by now you know which would seem like forever ago. But, you know, really, like, you know, in the grand scheme of things, maybe not that long ago. You know, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it, it would just, I don't know. I think that in my, in, in our lifetime, I think that'd just be just a really cool thing to see that, uh, you know, uh, a man going to, uh, or a human being uh, going to Mars. Uh, especially, you know, I, I, of course, I didn't, I didn't. I wasn't alive in 1969, but I can only imagine the American public and their eyes glued to their television sets, you know, such as, uh, you know, such as was observed, uh, you know, on, uh, in, you know, on various television programs and, and, and films that depicted the, the, the moon landing. You know, I, I could imagine if a man or, or human being, excuse me, were to uh, uh, go to Mars you land on Mars. Maybe it might be a joint effort between uh, just multiple space agencies. But if a man, if a man or woman were to go to Mars and um, and land there, I, I I could, 
I could imagine that, that the whole world would be glued to their television sets, you know, rejoicing and, and, and you know, in unison, just being in awe of the capabilities of human beings, sending a man to a different planet or woman, or human being, or whatever, or a dog, or monkey, or whatever, right? That, that just sounds, that just sounds like a really sweet deal, you know, and, and, and I hope, I really do hope that in my lifetime, however long or short that is, uh, you know, I, I'd be able to, to witness that on my television screen, or my computer screen, or on my, on my uh, smartphone, or tablet, or something, you know, just, you know, and especially with the, uh, you know how clear pictures are. You know, I, I, the the moon landing was uh, footage of the moon landing was was somewhat blurry. They didn't have no, uh, no ten eighty p or or whatever <laughs> to ten eighty p HD or whatever back then. But you know, just the the images. If a, if a person were to be on on Mars, just the images that they'd be able to take while, by walking around. You know. Of of course the uh, the images that uh, that these uh, robots take when whenever you know so, uh, NASA lands these robots on Mars, which happens maybe what every maybe every five years, every couple of years or so, you know, then and and they send back images, you know, and it never fails to uh, to awe and intrigue the general public. It's like whoa, you know, seeing the 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 the, the red, the 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 iron. Um, the, the reddish rusty floor and uh, or a ground or surface and and seeing seeing the uh, the sky which is which you know has is you know is also red but but you know maybe there's like bits of blue you know maybe maybe if if a person were to land on Mars you know perhaps just the the experience just visually would be a lot different than 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 what we've seen in pictures so far. You know, and, and, and I would love to be alive during that time where a person can, can describe and hopefully safely uh, or land there, uh, safely come back home and describe what they saw, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, if, you know, maybe someone that's younger than me or someone that, you know, and someone, if you're, if you're a younger person, if you're going to school now, or if you, if you're in a, you know, if you're in a teenager or, or, or even, you know, just going to school and maybe, maybe one of you can fulfill my childhood dream of being an astronaut and go to Mars and maybe tell me about your experience. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that that's it for me for today or tonight, uh, where, wherever you are, you know, whatever time of, uh, time of day you're listening. Um, so if you want to, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, if you want to tell me, um, you know, ways that, 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 uh, ways that, that you can, uh, light a fire under your butt that, that helps get you up and helps wake you up and, 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 and get ready to start your day in the morning. Or if you want to, um, you know, if you, if you want, uh, to tell me ways that, that, that maybe you felt in a funk and, uh, and just, uh, simple ways that 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 have helped you get out of your your little your little funk you know you could uh you could uh, l let me know or how how you feel about space exploration you can always hit me up on my uh twitter or instagram uh you know, twitter.com slash derek thinks d e r i c k t h i n k s or instagram.com slash derek thinks again d e r i c k t h i n k s if you're listening to this on uh, on SoundCloud, uh, and you have a SoundCloud, you could always uh, leave a comment. Or if you're uh, listening to this on YouTube, uh, I do have a YouTube channel where I do post these podcasts. Of course, it, my channel is is not only in its infancy; it's it's barely taking its very first, second, and third breaths. But I would love it if you were to uh, leave a comment in the comment section. So yeah, Twitter and Instagram, uh, SoundCloud, uh, and YouTube, uh, D-E-R-I-C-K-T-H-I-N-K-S, Derek Thinks. Uh, and I will conclude this podcast with a reading from a poem, and it's by um, Jenny Joseph, uh, the late Jenny Joseph, 
uh, I believe she, she passed away uh, earlier uh, this year. And uh, her, uh, her poem is called Warning. When I am an old woman, I shall wear purple, with a red hat which doesn't go and doesn't suit me. And I shall spend my pension on brandy and summer gloves, and satin sandals, and say we've no money for butter. I shall sit down on the pavement when I'm tired, and gobble up samples in shops and press alarm bells, and run my stick along the public railings, and make up for the, the sobriety of my youth. I shall go out in my slippers in the rain and pick flowers in other people's gardens and learn to spit. You can wear terrible, terrible shirts and grow more fat and eat three pounds of sausages at a go or only bread and pickle for a week and hoard pens and pencils and beer mats and things in boxes. Oops. Pardon me. But now we must have clothes that keep us dry and pay our rent and not swear in the street, and set a good example for the children. We must have friends to dinner and read the papers. But maybe I ought to practice a little now, so people who know me are not too shocked and surprised when suddenly I am old and start to wear purple.